Three of the greatest engineers backed by one of the biggest tech companies in the world dared to ask an important question. What if C was reborn for the cloud era? Faster than Java, cleaner than Python, and easier than C++. That is Go. A language so simple, it feels like cheating, yet so powerful, it runs some of the biggest systems on the internet. This is the untold story of Golang. During the mid-2000s, engineers at Google faced a frustrating reality. Code compilation took 45 minutes or more just to test a single change. Google's code base had become a web. Thousands of engineers worked in one massive repository and their tools were breaking down. C++ builds took forever. Java ate memory. Python was too slow for systems work. Multi-core processors were everywhere, but existing languages made parallel programming a nightmare. Three legendary engineers, Robert Gresmer, Rob Pike, and Ken Thompson. These pioneers, each with deep roots in computing history, set out to build something new, a programming language designed to be fast to compile, easy to read, and powerful enough for the scale of Google's infrastructure. These three engineers had the credentials to fix this. Pike had worked on Unix and Plan 9, Thompson co-created Unix and designed the B language that led to C, and Griezmann had built Java's virtual machine at Sun, and they had the full power of Google at their back. They didn't want to build an academic experiment. They wanted a tool that worked at Google's scale. As Pike put it, Go is more about software engineering than programming language research. The mission was clear. Eliminate the slowness that was killing developer productivity. After two years of development, in November 2009, the first public version of Go was released. It was simple, efficient, and built to tackle the challenges that had held back engineers for so long. This was the spark that ignited a revolution in programming. The future was here, and so was a language made for the future. But how do you actually build a programming language from scratch? How was Go built? Pike, Thompson, and Grisma faced the classic chicken and egg problem. They need a compiler to compile their language, but their language doesn't exist yet. Thompson had a secret weapon, Plan 9. This distributed operating system from Bell Labs had a compiler toolchain that was lean, fast, and code-tested. While the rest of the world struggled with bloated build systems, Plan 9's compilers were known for their speed. So instead of starting from zero, they borrowed Plan 9's compiler architecture. Go's assembler syntax was straight out from Plan 9. The stack-based calling convention was also from Plan 9. They weren't just building a language, they were adapting a proven compiler system. And here was how they did it. For a language that didn't exist yet, the team started by writing the first Go compiler in C. This compiler was simple, almost crude, but it could parse Go code and spit out machine code. They then used that C-based compiler to compile a version of itself written in Go, a method called bootstrapping, pulling yourself up by your own bootstraps. They then discarded the C version. By Go 1.5 in 2015, the entire toolchain was written in Go itself. But the real engineering miracle was in the runtime. Most languages either compile to native code, fast but complex, or run on virtual machines like Java, which is flexible but slow. They chose a third path. They built a runtime that was both native and smart. No virtual machine, no bytecode interpretation. Go compiles straight to assembly code. But that assembly code links to a sophisticated runtime that handles the complex stuff. The runtime manages Go routines across CPU cores, runs garbage collection concurrently, and makes network I.O. non-blocking, all without the programmer writing a single line of threading code. But the creators of Go didn't stop there. When your Go program makes a network request, it doesn't block the entire thread. The runtime suspends that Go routine and runs others while waiting for data. This happens automatically, no callbacks, no async await keywords. The runtime handles it behind the scenes. From day one, Go could cross-compile. Write code on your Mac, compile for Linux servers, Windows machines, even different CPU architectures. The compiler generates the right assembly for each target. And it wasn't even an afterthought, it was built into the architecture. The Plan 9 Foundation made this natural, since Plan 9 was designed for distributed systems running on different machines. The team's engineering decisions paid off. Go compiles faster than C++, runs faster than Java, and deploys easier than Python all because they started with a proven compiler foundation and built a smart runtime around it. They took 40 years of systems programming experience and packaged it into a language that felt simple. The complexity was hidden in the implementation, not exposed to the programmer. It was built on decades of real-world systems experience, optimized for the problems that actually matter, fast builds, reliable deployments, and code that works at scale.
And speaking of scale, developers today face a new kind of challenge. Not compilation delays, but decision overload. So many AI tools are out there, one for ChatGPT, one for Claude, another for image generation, another for code. It's fragmented, and if you're paying for them all, it adds up fast. That's why platforms like ChatLLM Teams are changing the game. Visit chatllm.abacus.ai, an all-in-one hub where top AI models like GPT-4.1, Claude Sonnet 4, Gemini 2.5 Pro, Grok 3, DeepSeek, and more come together in a single place. No need to guess which model to use, Root LLM picks the best one based on your prompt. You can create full documents or slides with deep research, write and test code inside the built-in code LLM editor, and for advanced tasks, use DeepAgent. It builds apps, bots, websites, even research workflows, and all of this, just $10 a month. Way more affordable than paying for each tool separately. Try it now at chatllm.abacus.ai or click the link in the description and pinned comment. And while today's tools keep adding more, Go's power came from taking things away. Most languages add features, Go's team decided to remove them. Ken Thompson had tried reading the C++11 spec and gave up. That was the convincer for me, he said. The complexity was unbearable. Read or tried to read the uh, C++ 0x uh, proposed <laughs> standard. Uh, that was the convincer for me. Their approach was unique. Take everything out, strip it down to the absolute minimum needed to build large systems. No inheritance hierarchies, no function overloading, no exceptions. Even generics got cut. Some called it laziness, others insisted it was discipline. Every feature had to justify its existence against one question. Does this help or hurt teams of thousands working on the same code base? Go ended up with just 25 keywords. Python has 35, Java has 50, C++ has over 60. The result felt almost too simple. But that was the point. While other languages bolted on threading as an afterthought, Go made concurrency a first-class citizen. The team borrowed from Tony Hoare's communicating sequential processes. Instead of sharing memory between threads, Go programs pass data through channels between lightweight Go routines. Meaning instead of communicating by sharing memory, it's shared memory by communicating. A Go routine takes 2 KB of stack space. A Java thread takes 2 MB. Millions of Go routines can be spawned without breaking a sweat. The standard library includes a garbage collector that runs concurrently, cleaning up memory while your program continues running. For a systems language, this was almost heretical, but it worked. Google's massive services could finally use all their CPU cores without the threading headaches that plagued C++. November 10, 2009. Google open-sourced Go. The team was not sure if the world of programming would accept the language, but whether or not got flopped, they hoped their ideas about concurrency and simplicity might influence other languages. The reaction split the programming world. Some developers cheered the arrival of something cleaner than the complexity around them. Others dismissed it as just another language or complained about missing features. But early adopters saw the magic. C++ level performance with Python level ease. Cross compilation that actually worked. Binaries that ran anywhere without dependencies. Inside Google, teams started replacing older tools with Go versions. Build times dropped from minutes to seconds. The coffee break excuse for slow builds became a running joke. For the first few years, Go grew quietly. The creators knew programming languages take about a decade to hit their stride. Then, 2013 happened. Docker launched, built entirely in Go. Containers exploded across the industry, and suddenly everyone was running Go code. Google followed with Kubernetes in 2014, also written in Go. The one-two punch of Docker and Kubernetes put Go at the center of the cloud revolution. The pattern repeated. Prometheus for monitoring, etcd for distributed storage, Istio for service mesh, Terraform for infrastructure. By 2024, Go maintains its position in the GitHub top 10 languages, powering the backbone of modern cloud infrastructure. Companies chose Go not for flashy features, but for practical reasons. Fast compilation, static binaries, low memory usage, and built-in concurrency. In the cloud, these translate directly to cost savings. Go's satisfaction rate remains at 93% among developers, proving that sometimes less really is more. For over a decade, one question haunted every Go conference. When will Go get generics? The team's answer never changed, when we can do it right. Other languages had generic programming templates in C++, generics in Java. Go relied on interfaces and code generation instead. The community was split between those who missed generics and those who appreciated Go's simplicity. The Go team refused to rush. They'd seen what happened when languages added features carelessly. 
they waited until they found a design that fit Go's minimalist philosophy. Finally, on March 15, 2022, Go 1.18 introduced generics. After 13 years, Go's first major language feature arrived. The implementation was typically Go, powerful enough to solve real problems, restricted enough to avoid C++-style complexity. The decade-long wait proved the team's discipline. Go had already conquered the cloud without generics. Go's cartoon mascot, a smiling blue gopher designed by René French, became one of tech's most recognizable symbols. In 2024, 37% of Go developers work on data pipelines for ML, AI systems, and 41% build API endpoints for AI models. While Python dominates AI research, Go quietly powers the infrastructure behind AI systems. A language that began as a solution to Google's compilation problems now serves AI models, manages vector databases and orchestrates machine learning workflows. Go's share of API traffic jumped from 8.4% to 12% in 2024, as companies build AI-powered services. Go's roadmap includes optimizations for modern hardware, better CPU vectorization, smarter garbage collection for multi-core machines, and performance improvements for AI workloads. The team maintains their core principle, evolve carefully. Any new features must make developers' lives easier, not harder. From a hallway complaint at Google to the backbone of cloud computing, Go proved that in programming, less can be more. The language succeeded not because it had the most features, but because it had the right ones. Fast compilation, clear syntax, built-in concurrency, and static binaries solved real problems that developers faced every day. Rob Pike, Ken Thompson, and Robert Griesmer bet that programmers wanted their tools to get out of the way. The bet paid off beyond their wildest expectations. Today, Go powers the services you use daily. It orchestrates containers, manages databases, and serves web APIs, all with the quiet efficiency that made it famous. The Blue Gopher represents more than a programming language. It represents the idea that complex problems don't always need complex solutions. The best tool is the one that solves problems, not fight your compiler. As Go enters its next 15 years, in a world of endless complexity, one thing is certain, it will continue evolving while staying true to the simplicity that made it great.